Hi everybody, we're going to talk about our budget today with what we spent in 2023. Now I've gone into a little bit of detail to give you a bit of information on what we spent on food and what kind of food we bought, what um, drinks and alcohol we bought, what sites that we were at, like what free camping, what was um, costing us. So there's a bit of information here. So for the 44 weeks, I'm going to give you what we actually spent and sorry I've got to read it so I'll start from the least amount the least expense for us because there's, there's 12 categories the least expense for us was tolls uh, we prevented them at all costs and we had to top up our um, East Link in Victoria tag so somewhere along the line we did go along a toll um, so we just topped it up with $38 so that works out to 78 cents a week in spence. The next one was presents. Now we don't buy for our six kids anymore. They're all adults. We don't buy for our parents. Um, Gil's parents aren't with us anymore. And my parents, we don't, we just agreed that we wouldn't buy anything for anymore. We only buy for the grandkid, um, which we've only got one grandchild. And uh, my niece has got a, a child that I bought for. And then some money towards Christmas this year. So we spent $300.44 cents which is six dollars 83 a week so that was one percent of our our, um, our expenditure another one percent was toiletries so we spent 367 dollars 30 which is eight dollars 35 a week you can work out what toiletries are um, number nine on our list going down entertainment and entertainment was three percent of our expenditure at $839.44, which is $19.08 a week. Now, we didn't get to go to any theme parks or anything like that. We were sort of keeping it pretty much. Gil went to a couple of caving things and that. Uh, most of our entertainment consists of buying DVDs from the op shop, which was like $199 of DVDs. The rest of it was just bits and pieces of, of like getting into somewhere or um, maybe a donation towards some sort of a, um, attraction there. So that was about it. Um, number eight on our list was maintenance. So that's maintenance on the car and the caravan. That took up 4% of our budget. Now that was 11,800, sorry, not 11,000, oh, jeepers, 1,108, <laughs> sorry, $1,188.26, which is $27.01. Now our car's pretty new, so is our caravan, but uh, we got a car and caravan weighing, which is $320. We got an uh, Anderson plug alteration on our car, so we could plug in our solar blanket to the car if we needed to, which is $338.50. We got a, a the Toyota $300 cap, which cost us $335.20. Forget that, that's another story. And uh, we did fill up the gas bottles twice. In the six months, we only needed to fill up twice. And that cost us a total of $40. One was $15, one was $25. So we're pretty lucky there. And then the rest, the $154.87, was just small bits and pieces, you know, buying a few screws here or buying some sort of maintenance things. So it's pretty easy for us. The rest of the maintenance that we had on the caravan was all under warranty. So we had major stuff done with the caravan and we still have to put it in again um, for more stuff, there's a leak. So that is all under warranty. Seven on our list is telephone and internet. Now that took up 8% of our budget, um, which is $2,675.97, which is $60.82 a week. Now the telephone and that, we've got Starlink now. We didn't when we first set out. We had like a Nighthawk and we had nothing but trouble with Telstra getting it fixed and they lost the part and uh, anyhow so we got Starlink it's $174 a month we have uh, my phone and which is $64.20 and Gil's phone is $35 we're both on different plans I've got Telstra and he's got TPG so sometimes he gets reception sometimes I do whatever um, our next year our expenditure for uh, telephone and internet is going to go up from the $2,600 to $3,278.40 based on the current figures. So it is a, a huge expense. Uh, number six on ours, which was 9% was medical. 
Now, it's $2,795.45, which is $63.50 for a day. Medical, right. So, in between going away for the first three weeks and coming back, both Gil and I hurt our backs. Um, I have a back issue anyway, and we both ended up being to the point where we needed to see chiropractors and physios and um, just everything happened. We got stuck in Shepparton for a month because we are trying to fix it. It limited me to go everywhere. I budgeted $60 a, a week, I think it was. And no, I think it was less than that. I'll have to have a look. Um, I budgeted a lot less. We exceeded with telephone. We exceeded with medical. Um, and we exceeded with insurance. So... They're the three things we blew the budget out. So number five on our list is um, site fees. So our site fees were $3,043.50, which is $69.18 a week. Now site fees take up, excuse me, I've got papers everywhere. We spent 115 nights with family and friends, which cost us nothing. We spent 62 nights at free camps. Um, 15 nights at either a low cost or a donation camp. So anything under $10. We spent 49 nights on anything $20 and under. So they'd be caravan parks or bush camps or that, that it's, it's under the $20 or under. And we spent, in the camps that are over $20, we spent 67 nights. Now part of that was the month in Shepparton. Part of that was, the worst one was being in Dramana, which was our first week um, first six days that we were away was $49 a night. We stayed there because it was our first trip. We hadn't been anywhere. We hadn't taken the caravan anywhere. And we met up with friends there. So it was sort of like a, it was a familiarity for us to be able to get used to back in the caravan, helping, having someone there to help us and, and settle into starting to, to travel. So that was, that was the expense for us. Um, so sites, yeah, end up being $69.18 a week, which is not which is not much. The next is incidentals. Now that was incidentals was 10%, uh, which was $3,060.67, which is $69.57 a week. Now incidentals to us was anything that we hadn't categorized in the other categories, which was like Netflix parking, clothing, shoes haircuts, um, I have diaries, I write in a diary every day, tats lotto, any electronics we had to buy for the caravan or that that we've worked out that we don't have, um, small items for the car and caravan, the bladder which costs $300, the water bladder, uh, I bought a hard drive for the Mac which was $197, there's postage, I do knitting so that was yarn in, involved in that, so all those little bits and pieces um, which you, you're always going to have, but you know it's going to it's going to vary. So that was, as I said, sixty nine dollars fifty seven a week. So the third largest expense for us was fuel, at twelve percent of our. There's a bug. At twelve percent of our um, costs was three thousand nine hundred forty one dollars nineteen, which is eighty nine dollars fifty eight a week. Now, fuel wise, we probably didn't travel as quick as some people. We were quite happy to travel 20 minutes down the road, an hour down the road or whatever. Coming back, we did travel, I think it was 360 kilometers was the most that we did. So the car did 10,963 kilometers in the 44 weeks. The caravan did 5,153 kilometers. So we nearly traveled over just over half the time using the car. So after we've put the caravan there, which averages out of 36 cents per kilometer. Um, I can't tell you what it is just with a caravan or just with a car, but that's what it ended up costing us. Um, and that's based on all the, the fluctuation in, in petrol prices. Our second most biggest expense was insurance and registration. That took up 17% of our costs. So $5,437.30, $123.58 a week. Um, our car insurance is with Club 4x4. Four four. Oh, 
um, it costs $2,424.55 a year, which is $46.63 a week. A caravan insurance is with CIL, which is $2,265.96 a year, $43.58 a week. Our car rego is $825.23, which is $15.87. Our caravan rego is $65.29, which is only $1.26. Ambulance insurance is $103.88 a year, which is $2 a week. And the RACV, which is roadside assistance, is $246.50 a year, which is $4.75. Now remember, we are in Victoria, so they have Victoria's um, costs on all our stuffs registered in Victoria. Now, our most expensive thing at 26% of our expenditure is food. Now, our food includes takeaway, all our foods, any easy stuff. Um, our food, some of our food also includes, uh, or does include alcohol, does include drinks. It does, some of our takeaway includes drinks because I couldn't. They never gave you a receipt, so I couldn't divide between what was drinks and what's not. So our food was $8,409.92. That's $191.14 a week. That's for two people, two adults. And I'll give you the breakdown of food. Okay, so our takeaway, which was pubs, bakeries, easy meals that you can just heat and serve, and fast foods for the 44 weeks was $3,224.17, which is $73.28 a week. And meat, because I'm a we're big, I'm a big meat eater, um, was $2,341.92 for the 44 weeks, which is $53.28 uh, a week. Junk food, now I'm talking about ice creams, biscuits, chips, even takeaway ones. Um, we spent $899.21 in 44 weeks, so $20.44 a week. Doesn't sound as much when you say a week. A dry goods and other stuff is $350.19 for 44 weeks, at $7.96 for a week. Cheese, which is another big thing um, I ate quite a bit of, is $324.15, which is $7.37 a week. Fruit and veggies was $314.86, uh, which is $7.16 a week. Dairy, which is more cream, butter, sour cream, is $235.39 for the 44 weeks, which is $5.35. Bread and wraps, which mainly is just gill eating, that sort of stuff, is $183.04, which is $4.16 a week. Now, also, he makes sourdough never, nearly every week. Um, there were some weeks he didn't, but nearly every week he makes sourdough as well. So... Um, drinks, which we're talking about, more like soda water or sparkling water, um, cordial or something like that, is $162.44, which is $3.70 a week. Eggs is $137.43, which is $3.12 a week. Alcohol, Gil is the only one that drinks alcohol, minus a couple that I had at the pub, which is probably in with the pub stuff. $101.60 in 44 weeks. He's definitely not an alcoholic which is $2.31. Mind you, I think he drank four or five bottles of port before we left. So he even had one beside his bed at one stage to get it off, anyway. Um, and the last one is milk, uh, $53.11 for the 44 weeks. I don't drink milk, um, only Gil does in his, in his cuppa, which is $1.21. So that's all our expenditure. I hope it helps anyone who is heading off. Um, we went into detail with the food because everybody eats differently. So some people eat a lot more veggies than meat and that, so at least you can work out for yourself roughly. But you can roughly work out based on what you currently eat anyway. Um, so we blew our budget out by three of them. We were well under budget all up. So we actually spend, I don't know if I've written it down here. I'll put down below what we actually spend per week um, overall. And that's based on the two of us traveling. Now the other thing is, is in the 44 weeks, we traveled to quite a lot of places and camped in a lot of spots. 
So I just want to let everybody know what I like and what I disliked about traveling. We lived in our caravan for two years prior to traveling and I loved my caravan, I loved my bed and everything until I hurt myself and then I couldn't sleep properly anyway. So my likes are, um, I love the country and I love the quiet and I love the animals. Uh, even the dirt spots that we, there was a few places that were dirt spots, loved it. Uh, it was good to meet new people. Our uh, most memorable place that I like, so there's two. Lightning Ridge, um, it's a dusty dirt place and it was, it was warm, but it was, it was easy to relax there for us. We were out in the bush camp. We could relax. We didn't have a lot of people around us. A couple of people who did turn up, we ended up getting friends with. We had no issues at that stage with the car or caravan. So it was sort of halfway in our journey before we had issues with the car and the caravan. Um, we met lots of like-minded people. Oops. Uh, there was a lot of wildlife there. And we, we just got to relax and unwind. There was no pressure on anything. Uh, the other place I liked was Lake Carjellico. Now we'd met people, we were camping with them, so we had that social interaction. The people who were camping along the beach too were so very nice and friendly. There's a few dogs around. The, the sight and the scenery was beautiful. Lake Carjellico, the, the um, sunsets and, and, and sunrise and all that is it, all beautiful it's just beautiful to be there and it's, it's very quiet I would have stayed there a lot longer but we were blocking off the other people that we were with so we headed off as well now what I dislike my, my husband's going to see this video so um, to, to be honest I still haven't settled now living in the caravan for two years is different to travelling for six, seven months. Okay, so I still haven't settled. I felt more settled in that two years prior to leaving than I did being on the road. I just could not, um, I didn't know what we were doing. I didn't know where we were gonna go. I couldn't plan anything. I'm very planning orientated. I'm very um, go, go, go sort of thing mentally and that, and I need to creative and mentally be after, um, let that flow we didn't have any structure so that really put me off um, traveling a little bit I missed my plants I missed my aromatherapy I missed my massages I missed space um, even when I'd send Gil out for the day I still miss the space having space there everything like you've got to pull everything out to get to something else um, I like my own space I like my own company and a majority of the time that we were traveling, my health wasn't the best. So it made it hard for me to walk anywhere, to enjoy it, basically. So had my health been a bit better, like it was the first three weeks we went away, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. Okay, I slept and lived in our recliners for quite a bit, instead of being able to, because I couldn't get into the bed, I couldn't lay down and that. So that was a bit of a, a, a turn off. Um, comfortable in recliners but not when you're sleeping every night and the other thing was the design of our caravan it's all in one um, so the, the bedroom and the dining room is all in one and then you've got your bathroom the original caravan we saw had the bedroom then the bathroom and then the kitchen and dining room so it was a prince and I thought that's great because if someone wants to sleep someone can be up and vice versa I missed that I miss not having somewhere where if I wanted to be up to all hours of the night editing or writing or watching a video or that I could and he could go to sleep or vice versa I really did miss not having the rooms so if I was ever to look at another caravan it, I would want to be able to have some sort of two room system um, and then and then your bathroom so to, to date I still have not settled with the caravan I still toss up travel not travel um, and that because a lot of times I was sitting in the caravan just waiting for Gil to get back or he was out or I'd be sitting in the car waiting for him because I couldn't walk more than you know five minutes down the road um, so he would go off and take photos and do videos and 
and, and do everything. So that's my likes and dislikes. Gil will put his in. Um, I can bet that he likes most of the things because he really wants to travel again. So if you were going to ask me what I like most about traveling and camping, I'd have to say, you know, discovering new places. Um, some of the free camp, pretty cool when you get to the end of a dirt road. And it's a really nice spot and it's free as a bonus. Um, meeting new people and like-minded sort of travelers who are, you know, into the same sort of things as us is, you know, that's, that's really cool. Um, most memorable places, I'd have to say uh, Lightning Reach. We spent a bit of time there and just it's a very quirky, different sort of place. Don't think I'd like to be there in the heat of summer, but, you know, I enjoyed that. Um, one of the places that stands out, I guess, is Lake Jellico, um, New South Wales. We did stay there as well and met some lovely people. It was on the lake, beautiful sunsets, but, you know, there's a bit of bird life, wildlife around. Um, very relaxing, going to have campfires there. So, you know, that was really nice. Um, things I would dislike about traveling, um, I guess everyone will agree with me. Mosquitoes, I mean, ants aren't too good. The mosquitoes sort of getting bitten and then having, you know, nights of being in bed itchy because you're hot and uncomfortable. It's annoying no matter where you are, I guess. Um, the time in St George dealing with the uh, car issues with a not so helpful dealer um, is an unpleasant experience and yeah it just puts a bit of a downer on the place and the you know location uh, just due to the um, unpleasantness of it all so it just puts a negative vibe on the whole place the whole stay um, so yeah not overly happy about that one so for now I hope that helps. Um, if you're about to travel, do it. Just do it. Um, find out for yourself if you like it or don't like it. And then if you are like me, that you still can't settle, then we're trying to work out ways to put in place things that will actually help it easier for me to feel more at home, basically. So anyway, bye for now. And um, if you like the video, please subscribe. We are looking forward to trying to do some things next year to help out some businesses next year and some people that need some help so if you come along for the venture we really love it if you've got any ideas for new videos we'd love to hear from those too anyway for now bye